Stand by. Stand by. Okay, I'm opening up to the general public now, and then we should be going live in a minute. Okay, you're live. Okay, thank you. Welcome to the- This meeting is being recorded. Being recorded. Welcome to the Village of Buchanan Board of Trustees regular meeting, Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with Executive Order 202.1. You'll be able to view this meeting live on Facebook. And um, if you have any questions, for comments, please call 914-737-1034 and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United, States, United States, States, States of America and to the and Republic, Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Okay. So let's start with the approval of the minutes, uh, April 7th, 2021, budget hearing. Any comments, questions? I have nothing. We're good? I have nothing. Okay, good. All right, on a motion? So moved. Approved, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, for the April 27th, 2021 workshop. Comments, questions? I have nothing. Okay. On a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. On, on a question, Mayor. Oh, on a question. I'm sorry. Sure. Are we going to, we, this is a special meeting and workshop. So are we just approving the workshop part or, or the special meeting part also at the same time? I believe everything that's on here, that's what we're approving. This okay. So I, I do have one thing I would like added. Oh. In the uh, on item number four, the 2020 TAC 11, the resolution uh, for the MOU with Entergy, I mean, uh, Holtec. Yes. I know that we're doing minutes uh, a little bit differently where it's generalization, but I would like uh, a, a line added in there that during the discussion that a uh, contentious discussion between the mayor and trustee Murray ensued about the merits of the village's intervener status. Let's see. It was, okay. It wasn't at the April 27th meeting, wasn't that? No, that's where we passed the resolution. It was at 43 minutes of the April 27th meeting. Okay. So I, was a little, I was a little confused myself because I, I knew it was around that time, but I, I just wanted it to be reflected in there in case somebody can't remember what meeting we had the discussion at, you know. So you want to add in during the discussion well, any any place in there, uh, beginning and it doesn't really matter. Just a, a note saying that a contentious discussion between me and you ensued about the merits of the village's intervener status. That's all. Okay. Just as a little reference, so people will know if they want to watch it next year, two years, whatever you know. Because of the intervener status, but did you not vote on the MOU? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I just just wanted. Just wanted to annotate it that we, we had a, a heated discussion. Or I don't a lively heated. discussion, perhaps? Uh, well, let, lively, yes, lively, the, the historians need to know that. Absolutely. Let's get that in the record there. <laughs> uh, I would, Well, it's, it's hard for me to remember. Like you said, it's only been a couple of months that I had to go through a couple of meetings to see. That's all. Okay. That's fine. That's exactly what happened. Okay. So where were we? Did I do a motion second? Thank you. Uh, mo motion to amend the meetings as requested. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And are we going to now vote on this? Approve it? We just did. Well, he was to amend to amend what was in there. Yeah, whoever made the motion amended it. We seconded it and we all, all right. we're, we're, we're all done. done. That's okay. it. We're done. Okay. That's fine. Just want to be certain. Okay, so we're moving along to the May 4th board meeting. Any additions, questions, comments? Uh, I have a couple of things. Sure. Let's see. On page five, okay. under trustees reports, under trustee Murray's report, bill, fourth line down, bill number S4547, which allows for multifamily dwellings in single family units, should that 
say multifamily dwellings and single family zones? No. It was per unit. The, the no, it was in the zone. It's in the no, zone. No, that doesn't make sense if you say multifamily dwelling in a single family unit. It should be multifamily dwellings in single family zones. That's correct. Okay. So we need to change the word units to zones. All right. Okay. I, I do oh, have an update oh. on that in a minute, too. So. Okay. Uh, oh, good. Also, at the bottom of Trustee Murray's report, Trustee Murray commented that it aggravates him that the village officials will not stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. He feels it is disrespectful and village officials should set the example. And that <coughs> that is accurately what Trustee Murray said. <coughs> but similarly to Trustee Murray's <coughs> issue, excuse me, <coughs> with the last minutes that we just amended. I don't think this accurately reflects what happened. I know, as just as Sean just said, we are doing abbreviated minutes, but this is misleading for anybody that reads it because I think after his comments, both uh, uh, Trustee Function, I believe the mayor, I have I had commented after a similar comment uh, explaining that this village board has always been respectful of the country and the flag but that Zoom changes the rules of the game and that some of us find it more comfortable to be looking at the screen and sitting down. It's nothing to do with disrespect. So while if you just read this without any perspective, it sounds like we're a bunch of non-patriotic um, so-and-sos, uh, but actually, you know, we have our own criteria. And uh, I don't think this, I think this is misleading to anybody reading the minutes in the future. So how would you like it amended, Nick? Yeah, would so you I like would like it amended to say amendment? that, um, Rich, can you help me yeah, remember would, exactly what like, you said? I would, I would like my response and the mayor's response to be incorporated. Uh, Cindy, who does it, you can, uh, you know, couch it any which way you want if it's if the responses are too long, but they, they're really not that long when you look on, on uh, YouTube. And uh, it, to, to go with what Nick says, it's, it's, it's not complete here so uh well, whatever way cindy wants to write it it's, in, com no it's complete as far as what sean said but it's misleading as to the conversation and uh, what our stand was right well, well to keep it simple you can add the same words we just added to the other part like uh, uh, a contentious debate over the merits of trustees murray's uh comments uh, were discussed or something like that well i'd like to, i'd like it to say that uh, that uh, I'd be a little bit more specific that okay you know that because this doesn't reference the fact that these meetings are on zoom and it doesn't and it it's just misleading to me um i don't know rich if you have any particular wording I, I, suggestions I, would like, I can't say for the mayor but i i would like my full response incorporated you can get it off of youtube cindy okay all right well then if trustee functions words are going to be verbatim i would like mine to be verbatim then too all right so cindy since we all feel it necessary to be verbatim, could you, we're not going to vote on this this evening. We'll hold Correct. this over to the July meeting. If you could um, add in all the verbatim in there, and then we will look at that once again, and then we will approve this if everyone agrees at the next meeting in July. You know, based on the number of people that are likely to read these minutes, it's kind of a moot point, but I just find well, that, it's a little, that's why I was should anybody like want to read it? I think it's a little misleading. That, that's why. That's why I would think that we could just put a blurb in there that there was a lively discussion or heated discussion or whatever, so people can tune right into the video, so they could have the same frame of reference. You know, if, if we're gonna, the only reason why I say I wanted it to be in there verbatim just because you guys wanted it all in there. So I, if, if it's good for one, it's good for the other. Absolutely. You know, I, I think if we just reference where you can find the information, that will still suffice. You know? you know, if the, if the, I, I mean, Rich, I know you said verbatim to me, as long as the, uh, the essence is extracted out of it in the same way that the essence of what Sean said is that the essence of what the other people responded is extracted. I think that would be okay. The verbatim could start to get add a whole page. Yeah. I would just hate to have Cindy have to go and. Why play. don't you let me go back and see what I can do right. and then I'll send it to you guys, to all of you, and then we'll look at it again. All right. Thank you. Perfect. So appreciate it. I felt I was thank you. Okay. I have a right to defend myself and I yep. have a right to, to, to let the population of this village know that I'm a very patriotic person. And if, 
I did not start this crap. It was started by Trustee Murray. So uh, I, I, I'd like my words in the way I put them. Okay. Fine. All right, and we can review it before the next meeting, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Nick, do you have any other corrections? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, I have one uh, under mayor's report. It's down towards the end. Um, and well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six up from the bottom. The what West page you on? I am on page six. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And it says the Westchester Municipal Officials Association. Cindy, I, I apologize, but um, that's still in play, the WMOA, but um, NICOM was the one that was definitely against this uh, legislation that's being introduced at the time it was being introduced. Um, I do, so I would just like to change NICOM in there instead of WMOA. Sure. Um, and after, I, let me let me tell you now, this bill, so everyone knows, is not moving forward this year. I spoke to Senator Harcum. Um, he's gotten a lot of comments and they're back to the drawing board with it, but this will not move forward this year. Um, I just noticed in your report, the same mistake is made where it says allows for multifamily dwellings and single family units. It should say in single family zones. zones. Okay, my apologies. Didn't see that before. Yeah. What they're looking to do is all the single family houses can have accessory apartments. Basically, that's what they're looking at. And then there was some pushback. So we'll see where that ends up. I don't know, but it's not happening this Sounds year. Sounds like overreach to me. <laughs> okay, any other any other corrections, comments on a motion? Out here. Motion to- Second. Well, there's no motion. We're waiting for the uh, revision, aren't we? Correct, yeah. I apologize. So we're going to, what, do you, what would I say? Adjourn this until uh, the, we're going the to, uh, July uh, meeting? You'll table it. Table defer it. the defer the approval of these minutes to the next meeting. Yes, thank you, Nick. Sorry. All right, thank you. All right, so further discussion on that. Okay, so um, I would like to uh, amend our agenda for this evening and bring forward uh, letter F. Uh, Mr. Bell is here, and I don't want to. Um, let him have to sit through our whole meeting because there's a lot going on here. And um, Mr. Bell is going to discuss our pool. We have uh, comments from the floor, agenda items only. First. Oh my gosh, boy, I am off track tonight, aren't I? I'm gonna get back on track, don't worry. Thank you, Nick. That's all right, Thank you. that's all right. Okay, first we, comment We got each other's floor. backs. Thanks, buddy, thanks. We're just trying to do the right thing for the right reasons. Um, comments from the floor, agenda items only. Does anyone have any comments? We'll give it a minute or so. So Cindy, if you get any calls, please let us know. Uh, anybody as well, uh, it's on Zoom, just raise your hand. No hands raised, Mayor. No hands raised. No phone calls, Cindy. Okay. No they, phone they, calls. they still have an opportunity after to uh, mm -hmm. to comment. Okay. So, Mr. Bell. Yes, ma'am. How are you this evening? And Good. thank you for coming. You're welcome. <clears throat> so, you have some more information for us? Well, we, uh, I had a conversation with Marcus uh, earlier this afternoon to try to figure out exactly what you folks were looking for from me. Um, and I got a, an update on uh, the status of the pool motor and our pumping motor for this year. Um, there is some, the, the, I guess the question is, what are you guys going to do going forward with the pool? And what I told Marcus is that um, if we make any changes to the pool, other than, you know, a simple maintenance item, which is what you're doing with the the existing pump, then we're we're subject to the Westchester County Health Department going through the the whole system and uh, updating the the whole pool to their standards. Ouch. Um, which could be number one, it could be long and tedious. Uh, we don't know what the cost implications of that might be. 
I had given you an estimate of uh, for a new filter system, uh, two, two estimates, actually one for a, a vacuum sand filter and one for an above ground uh, pressure sand filter. And the reason I did that was that the existing, the existing filter is uh, undersized for today's standards. However, it's my understanding that the county will continue to allow you to use it under um, current conditions, provided you don't make any changes to anything other than shutting off the, the kiddie pool. So I guess my suggestion would be to you is to go ahead, put the new, put the refurbished pump in, run it this year and see how, um, you know, if you still have leaks once you shut that kiddie pool off, and you know, if so, you can you can contact me. We can put our heads together. But I really think that uh, the leakage was through uh, a few valves that are over there in the in the in the ground by the kiddie pool. That maybe were a valve was open and shouldn't have been, and it was, the water was going to waste. <clears throat> or there was a substantial leak in the in the line going from the pump to the kiddie pool. But that's unlikely because it, you would have seen water bubbling up somewhere. So. I guess at this point, I would say continue to do nothing <clears throat> other than just maintain the existing pool as is. Um, and as long as the county doesn't rock the boat as far as you using it that way, then continue to do that. Because to go to the to go to the uh, expense of upgrading the, the filter is just one piece of it. You know, they may want you to put deck drains in. Um, uh, work on the deck, uh, you know, all sorts of all sorts of other items that I can't foresee at this point what they're going to want. Do you have any idea how long the the, 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 the the you know the that whole thing you're talking about, like let's say after this pool season, how how long would that take to do construction wise? I'm sorry, say that again. How long you, you mentioned that you recommend we we fix the mechanical thing this year and then after after the pool year is up, let's say in September, whenever September or in spring, we're going to do all the other repairs. How long would that, all those other repairs take to do? No, I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting you don't do the other repairs because to do the other repairs would involve, involve getting the county involved. Right. Not this year I'm talking about, but when we go after this year, we use it. Then right. we're, we're, you're asking us to consider what to, to, go completely get it into into correct order. How long would that take, that particular thing? Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bell is recommending that we don't do anything yeah, for the anything. foreseeable future oh, until yeah. until we hit a problem, because his oh, okay. concern okay. is the construction cost, the way the price is going up right now, and then the county involvement. Okay. So um, I think okay. he's recommending to stay. At, uh, stay I don't want to cut you off, Andy, but I think that's what you're recommending, correct? That's correct, yeah. OK, so, thank you. May, so may replace, I ask, if we replace we the filter, still have, that would open the Pandora box with the county, the health but department. But we still do have to replace the pump yes. to get it up and running. Yes. It, I and guess they're they're having the uh, the the impeller from the existing pump uh, remade, so that whether they're going to reuse the existing pump and, and put a new impeller and motor in the existing pump. So we don't have to purchase the pump that we spoke about at the last I, meeting. The, the, I think the pump is already on order. You don't have any choice on that, but you're going to put it on the shelf for future. Yeah, years. yeah, Nick, the pump that's in there right now, uh, it could be hopefully repaired this week or early next week. So they have the um, the pool open for summer camp. Uh, the pump that was on order was a special made uh, pump and equipment. And that's not going to come into that middle part of July. So the idea right now is to rebuild this pump, right. um, have it up and running, and have the new pump on the shelf in case this rebuild pump fails. The new, pump, is, the new pump being the temporary pump that we just ordered. The, it, no, the new pump we ordered is the brand new pump. Um, okay, so that, we were going to order. We were going to order a pump that we could get quickly in order to get the pool up and running. And yeah. there was another pump that was going to re, be used to replace that. So we're no longer ordering that temporary pump. But we are getting the new uh, finish, the pump that would be needed for the finished reno renovation. But we're not going to install it. We're going to just try to refurbish what's there. 
Correct. And that eliminates. Have I got that right? That you got, and that eliminates okay. the transformers and everything else that was being recommended. But the other pump that was off the shelf did not meet the electrical standards, so we needed transformers. Gotcha. Okay. So that's well, been that's been eliminated. Speaking but for myself, I say pump, let's go. The original pump that we ordered that had wouldn't get here in time is oh, that was going to come. Ready. Yeah. Okay. So my feeling, uh, speaking for myself, I think we should go ahead and do that minimal course of action right now and uh, not do what we do not have to do, but that we should also um, have an assessment and a plan of what might have to be done to, and monitor that so we don't get slapped broadside uh, when suddenly the pool is not working in the middle of camp next year or something. You know, so I think we need to continue to uh, monitor the condition and, um, and uh, look for so possible sources of funding or, you know, whether it's through uh, uh, the, our capital budget or whether it's through any kind of grant money, um, you know, take the minimal action, but uh, stay vigilant, vigilant as to what might have to happen in the uh, next year or two. That's so my Mr. feeling. Bell, you said that if we replace the, the filter, we do a new filter system, which you already gave us a price for, that would open up everything with the health department and it would it could put us in a whole nother place where they would demand other things. That's correct. And that and the item that was just the filter was because the existing filter is undersized. But I mean, you could be talking $250,000, $300,000 if, if the county, you know, really wanted you to, you know, replace everything or change everything out, you know, so. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of new requirements that Andy went through. I, I don't want to waste your guys' time, but Andrew has a list of things that the county has been requiring on new pools. And I mean, you're almost going to rebuild a brand new pool and it's going to be very expensive. By the time we get to that, it'll be twice the amount that, the, Correct. that you just quoted. Well, yeah. how's the board feel about that? But just uh, fix the pump, get the keep it working this year, and maybe well, like just, Nick I, said, we can reassess. And at, our, at our last meeting, we said that we wanted to replace the pump and get it running for this year. Correct. So we'll I think the what we have to decide on is whether we're going to do the phase two uh, construction of the pool, and mm -hmm. if, if the pool is currently operating at its past design specifications, and Mr. Bell can guarantee us or assure us that uh, the pump will be sufficient. I, don't, I see no reason to, to create more more uh, resolutions. We said go fix the pool where we allocated the funds. So I think the only thing we should do is uh, just uh, not consider the motion for phase two. Okay. Okay. Well, I so, Mr. 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 Bell, Sean's question. So, with the pump replacement, uh, unless the pipes fail or something like that, the pump should be operational with the current filtering system and the new pump. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just you're replacing the seal, you're replacing the impeller, uh, probably a couple of bearings. Uh, is the is the pump casing? There's a lot of cavitation in the pump casing, or is the pump casing being replaced also? The pump casing is not being replaced. All right. So is it, does it have a good enough wall thickness? Are you still at uh, 875 of the original wall? I have no idea what that right. so is about. But that's the that's why you've got this other other pump okay. and motors sitting sure. on the shelf for so sure. you, you have right. it in case you, it the, it does fail. So if we if the if the pump casing fails, we just replace the entire pump casing with the right. assembly. So right. I, I think I think we're. I don't see why we should uh, have any failure mechanisms this year. And that's Mr. Bell's recommendation. That's Absolutely. correct. Absolutely. And remember that new pump, we should still, you know, we're just fixing up the this one, but the new pump should be in. When was the next estimated date? It was supposed to be before the pool was open, but what are we looking at? The middle of July now? Uh, yeah. yeah uh, the last update was the middle part of July. I have not received the updated time since the last time I reported, so there's been no update on that. And what's the uh, cost? What's the cost of the repair that we're going to do instead of replacing it with a temporary pump? What's the cost of uh, I, I emailed, up and running? I'm sorry, I emailed you guys the details uh, a couple of days ago. I don't have it in front of me now. Okay. So I don't. I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Okay, now. I, I didn't see that figure. Do, does anyone remember that figure? Five, seven. 
I have the original the area of 7,500 or 7,800 or something like that. You can say five or seven. Yeah, that's the installation right. and the parts and everything like that. Correct. It was. Right. It was something like that. But it, right. at, at least it'll get uh, pump up and running, and maybe uh, it could run for a couple of years. So we'll see. We'll see. And th and we should come up with a plan too. Like we're talking about operating now without the kiddie pool, and we've talked about possibly uh, uh, you know doing something new over there. So, you know, get this thing up and running for a year or two, and then we can uh, rediscuss it as far as any future plan. Yep. I think the priority now is just to get it running for the, the camp. That's, uh, that's really important. So, Okay. We all seem to be saying that. So if there's anybody that sees a reason to continue this conversation, nope. speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> no. Move on. Move on. Okay. Mr. Bell, anything else you would like to add or you're, you're good? <laughs> no, I think we're good. All right, Thank thanks so much for coming. You're welcome. Okay, so that settles that. Um, under old business, I'd like to make a motion um, to continue public hearing on amending chapter 195, water. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. All right, so we, we have been we have been working on this for a little while here, and this all started because this whole thing, this whole process all started because of a, a commercial water main leak. Um, and this really covers some of the responsi some of the responsibilities of, of property owners with maintenance and repairs. I know Sean had um, some concerns about notification of property owners. Um, I know, some new information came to light um, that we didn't, well, I had forgotten about. But um, I think one of the, the contentious things was uh, letter C on page one. And it was a discussion, I know Sean had this discussion on how to notify the property owner and I have not seen any other information with any other thoughts on what to do with this, how well, to it was, word it. It. Was, it wasn't about notification. It was about giving uh, an authorized agent the access to anyone's premises to make an examination or a repair. Okay. And that if the owner did not allow access for that examination, that the water would be shut off. So that was... That was the issue that I had because it seemed like we were legislating a way to do process to enter somebody's domicile. And I had felt that I had felt that in the future that this could this clause could be abused of somebody who might just want to gain access to a property and say, hey, I have the right to examine your water meter, oh. you know, and you have to let me in or else I'm going to shut your water off. And then ancillary to that inspection, other things could come to light. So I thought that it was somewhat circumvented the judicial process. I noticed Stephanie had sent out a couple of uh, uh, emails about changing that wording. So uh, I did read her uh, her emails, but the draft that we have still has the old language in it. So I didn't know uh, how to move forward. Like I said, mm -hmm. uh, if we were going to leave that in there, I would just vote against it. I don't know if everybody, anybody else has any of those same questions. I just don't like giving village authorities the ability to make an examination or repair without any rationale behind it. You know, so Sean, then we're going to, you know, I read, I read through this whole thing and, and under meters um, on the, Mm -hmm. Second page, under meters, it has the employees of the village may enter the premises of any consumer at any time between the hours of 8 and 6 p.m. to examine the meter and or connections and to read the same. So, you know, we're talking about that one section. This comes to mind, too. Um, I, you know, people still have a right not to let anyone in their home. And I, I do understand what you're saying because it gives the village the option of shutting off the um, their their water supply. I don't know legally about that because I believe that if there's not water in a person's home, that becomes a health department issue. So I'm not sure about that. But um, going back, you know, we we had put some new meters in, and except for some, we had put some uh, mostly new meters in the village, and you know. 
people can go to an app and see if their water usage is excessive or if they have a leak. And also um, at the village hall, um, I know that with the, new, with the new system, with the meters, they can also see if there's a leak. And I know they've been really good about contacting people, Cindy and Sharon, if there has been a potential water leak to tell the person about it. So, you know, that's, thank God we got the new water meters because that really does help and pinpoint it because we don't want to see people getting large water bills. That's, you know, that's not fair to them either. But so I'm not sure the wording that we need to say that, you know, people still have the right to say no. But then again, on the other hand, we don't want them to have an excessive, excessively large water bill. You know, if we don't let people know that they have a water leak or they're not looking at the app, then, you know, what happens there too? Well, as you know, we ran into this issue uh, about a decade or so ago, and we did pass legislation that exempts a one-time basis for the property mm -hmm. owner of uh, an excessive water bill. Uh, we had an issue with a, a resident on Bannon Avenue who lived alone, and there was a downstairs toilet that was running for four months, and it was an excessive water bill. And we forgave that bill as long as she gave proof that it was repaired and that was the one-time exemption for that property owner. So we do have some caveats in there. And, you know, I, I agree with you uh, about trying to protect the, the homeowner, but there again, that, that language to me is somewhat troubling. But what happens, for example, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. What happens if there's someone who, who <laughs> won't let, let anybody in and now it's one year, their bill is, I don't know, because they have a water leak, 3,000. Now the second year, 6,000. And now they come to us and say, you know what, there is this one time amnesty thing and my water bill was 6,000. So I'd like to do that's, the amnesty. That's a good so point. Like I when, think is, when is, when is, when is. Okay. You know, I think if we, if they notify, if, if we notify them, um, from, if we notify them that there's a leak and they do not let them, let us on the premises, that notification should serve, should also serve as a notice that they lose their right to that one time amnesty. Whatever that whatever that change takes, and um, you know it's to the it's to the residents' advantage uh, to allow to allow the village to address this now, or or else to author or to make sure that they're um, repairing it with an authorized uh, uh, plan and plumber or whatever. Uh, but also, what if the leak is between uh, the shutoff in the village right of way and the meter which is mounted on the house? There's an area between the meter, so that would be water that the village would be then paying for, but not the resident. That's nothing to do with entering somebody's house. But but that would be usually that would be a front lawn issue, not in the house. That's and that's fine. Anybody could see water bubbling up and say, "Hey, we got to fix this." <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I I did. By the way, I I think you guys when that came up about the one time amnesty. Um, you guys were very nice about that. I actually voted against that, I will say, because, okay. um, you know, I think that, uh, um, you know, it could get abused. Okay. But so, what about, what about we have 40 people that are still not, still not with the new meters. So they could, they could have a large water bill and they wouldn't know, we wouldn't know either. The old meters read low. So their water bill is lower because it's a mechanical reader. Mm -hmm. So they're getting more water than they're paying for. It. Okay. So. so that, you know, that, I don't know. I don't know how to address that. Honestly, I don't know. Either way. Yeah. I would, Stephanie had some suggestions okay. about Stephanie, language. Are you, the, yep. Stephanie is there. Steph, did you want to comment on any of this or what your um, suggestions are? I think Sean is referring to an email that I sent. I think Sean, that was just to you. Was that this morning? Uh, you know, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I I've been at work and I I don't ac I don't access any emails uh, outside for outside business. So I do it when I come home, and I was very busy today. So I I just glanced at it, and I really don't remember what you said, truthfully. Yeah, all but I did, did was change. Pretty good. All I did was change the language to say, you know, upon proof or reasonable suspicion of a leak. And the reason perfect. I did. That sounds okay. perfect to me. Upon reasonable suspicion of a leak. 
or proof because well, with the meters we can prove it absolutely right? okay um, I wish I would have remembered that stuff. I, I, I could have, that was easy enough. So we could say uh, an authorized agent may at any time enter a building upon reasonable proof or suspicion of uh, uh, a leak or damage to the meter or supply pipe to make an examination and repairs as necessary. How's that? How about adding by appointment? Oh, that's already in there, isn't it? Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, with necessary with necessary notifications and permission from the owner. It's already in there, okay. so you have to you have to notify them. So, to make the yeah, appointment. well, upon reasonable suspicion of damage or or uh, or leak or leak, and to make it repairs or inspections of the supply pipe and meters. What do you think? How's that? That's beautiful. That's Perfect. Perfect. Perfect for me. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. Done. I will make that correction for you. Great job. Sorry <laughs> to drag you into stuff, and I should have read it better when I came home. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments they would like to make on this chapter? No. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, could we see if there's anybody in the public? That oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm That's sorry. all right. Sean, we're both off today. Did you notice? Uh, <laughs> very tired long weekends long weekends okay that's fine that's fine so is there anyone that would like to comment on this Cindy let me know if anyone calls no calls okay no no hands raised okay Go I ahead. second Sean's motion okay so close the public hearing all right so all in favor all right uh, all right Okay, so under new business, resolution adopting local law number four of 2021, amending chapter 195 water. Let me read this. Um, whereas the motion was approved by the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan for a public hearing to be held by said Village Board of the Municipal Building, 236 Tate Avenue, Buchanan, to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law to amend chapter 195 entitled Water to the Code of the Village of Buchanan. And whereas notice of of said public hearing was duly advertised in the official news local newspaper. And whereas said local as whereas said public hearing was duly held at a regularly scheduled meeting of the village board on May 4th, 2021, and continued on June 1st, 2021 at 7:30 at the not at the municipal building on Zoom. And all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in opposition to said proposed local or law or any part thereof. And whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village Buchanan, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the Village Buchanan to adopt said local law. Now be it for now be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan hereby adopt said local law number four, 2021, amending chapter 195 entitled Water to the Code of the Village of Buchanan. Be it further resolved that the village clerk be and hereby is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the village of Buchanan and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary, secretary of the state of New York. So on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. On a question. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Passed. Okay. So now we're going to, um, I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing to modify Chapter 137, Article 2.3, entitled Portable On-Demand Storage Units, in other words, pods. On a motion to open the public hearing. I'll move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so there has been some discussion around this. We discussed this at the workshop. And mostly, mostly... I know, I know we have worked on this, this previously. Um, there was legislation passed years ago on the pods, but um, I think what we're looking to do mostly here tonight is to take the fee out and put it into our fee schedule. And I know, um, Nick, I know you had some comments you wanted to make on this. Well, I think at the last workshop, I, I, um, okay. we were, you know, we were kind of debating, and then we realized we're just going to leave it the, the code the way it is, except take out the fee portion. And I think I suggested 
making it a, well, here's, my, I have it written down here. My, the fee I proposed last time was $50, um, which is, help me out with the first period. Is it for a week or for 30 days? 30 days. 30 days. Yeah, I think people rent them by the month. By, by yeah. The month. See, I think I was suggesting, and then you could extend it to $25 a week up to four weeks. Does that make suggest, sense? I, I mean, think you suggested a hundred dollars next, and I suggested just double it from twenty-five to fifty and leave all the language the same. Well, I had originally yeah. said a uh, hundred dollar fee on the if you have to if you have to park it if you got to get permission to park it on the street, and fifty dollars if it's on your property. That's actually what I said. <laughs> if I may, I don't want to cut you guys off, but all, all you're talking right now is removing the fee from the code, and okay, then, so let's then we get, and then, then we can discuss the fee as part of the fee schedule. So maybe you want to get okay. the public hearing done first, and then okay. go to the next one. Thank you, Marcus. No problem. Thanks. Anybody else have comments on removing the fee, and then putting it into our fee schedule? No one. Okay, Cindy. Um, let me open it to the public. There's no one, there's, I don't think there's anyone else on Facebook. So, uh, Marcus, you're not going to see it. Oh, wait, there's a hand raised. I'm yeah, sorry. There's three, there's three, uh, I think there's three uh, other people in the meeting. I see it now up at the top. I apologize. The attendees. Okay. So, uh, Marcus, let Eileen in. I have. Go ahead, Eileen. You can speak. Okay. I just want to get this straight. All right. So, <clears throat> if we're not talking about the fee, then this particular, you can have a pod and it will be up to 30 days. And then it's almost like you can't wrap your head around this unless you have a fee. If there is a construction, let's say the, the house on Catherine Street has had a fire. That's so if, if there was a continuation after, four, after the 30 days and four weeks beyond, are they still allowed to have a pod there? If that, if I may, that is addressed under duration in the current code in an yeah. event of a fire or a hurricane or a national disaster, which the building, I think we give some um, some deference to the building inspector to take a look at it and then extend the permit. And extensions okay. of the permit yes. will be addressed at the next, you know, <coughs> after we close the public yeah. hearing in the fee schedule. So what we yeah. did here, Eileen, was we just changed the language instead of saying, $25 for each 30 days, we say the fee for the extension will be in accordance with the fee schedule as adopted yeah. and amended by this course. And, yeah. and, and, and my apologies, I was reading what I had been proposing uh, last uh, meeting, but actually in the last meeting, we pretty much just said, leave the code the way it is, except Thanks. removing the fees to the fee schedule. So the code still stands as it is, which means that the first permit is for a period of 30 days Yep. And that you can extend the permit for an additional 30 days by getting an extension. And no, and it says no one should be given any more than two permits in any six month period. A maximum of 90 days is allowed in any one consecutive 12 month period. But I, uh, I think we would work with someone with extenuating circumstances that has an emergency situation. Correct. And we give that to the building inspector. All right. In so so we're leaving the code as is. We're yep. just taking the fee out. And uh, I didn't mean to create confusion. I was reading from my initial suggestion. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? No calls. Okay, all right. So, all right. So on a motion to uh, close the public hearing. So moved. Modifying the pods. Second. Second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we have a resolution to, okay, now I'm going to read the resolution um, to adopt local law number five, amending chapter 137, article 2.3. So, whereas a motion was approved by the Board of Trustees, the Village Buchanan, for a public hearing to be held by said village board at the municipal building, 236 Kate Avenue, Buchanan, to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law to amend chapter 137, article 2.3, entitled Portable On Demand Storage Units, the Code of the Village of Buchanan. And whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the official local newspaper, and whereas said public hearing was duly held at a regularly scheduled meeting on Zoom in the Village of Buchanan, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof, 
And whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the Village of Buchanan to adopt said local law. Now be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan here, hereby adopts said local law number 5-2021, uh, amending Chapter 137, Article 2.3, entitled Portable On-Demand Storage Units to the Code of the Village of Buchanan. Be it further resolved that the village clerk be and hereby is directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting and in the local law book of the village of Buchanan and to give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary of the state of New York. On a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No one. Okay. All right. So now we move on to um, the fee schedule, what we are going to charge, what what should the fee be for the use uh, for the, the portable on-demand storage units? Uh, I know, Nick, you said 100. I know, Sean, you said to double the fee, $50. Does anybody else have any thought input on this? Wait, what's the fee right now, $25? 25, 25 yes. Yeah. And, and would that and would that fee for for each additional extension? Question: Would it be a one-time fee, or would it be for each month? I just want to make sure we clarify each, that. The extension is another is a separate fee. The first okay. the, the code currently allows the first the permit is for thirty days, and we need a fee for that. And um, fifty dollars is very reasonable. I you know I thought that there was some provision where you could put the dumpster on the street, but I'm not currently seeing that in the code where the way it's written. Not a pod, a dumpster. I think that you can get permission to do that, and I think the police chief becomes involved in that also. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. so fifty dollars fifty dollars seems fine for me. Fifty dollars and then fifty dollars for the second month. Fifty dollars each time you renew it for thirty days. Sounds good to me. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, perfect. Good. On a motion to add to the fee schedule, a fee for the pods, portable on demand units of $50 for the initial and for each month after, it will be $50. Please. I move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No one opposed. Okay, good. Okay, so we are going to have a discussion on the amnesty amnesty to all prior accessory apartments. Um, this uh, right now, right now, all of the accessory apartments are illegal. So all we're trying to do at this point is get everybody legal. Um, so we need everyone to be reinspected. The past will be forgiven. So we're starting starting from scratch here. Um, I know we had a discussion on this at the workshop. And um, so my only question to the board is, what if someone bought the home, there's a new owner there? Are we going to amnesty the whole, everyone together? Absolutely. Okay. So everyone will be, everyone is complete amnesty. So the building inspectors are with us today. Um, what would you what would your next step be? Would you be sending letters to all the, the people that oh. are accessory apartments? Well that, that's what that's what we had said at the last meeting okay. that we were gonna tell the building inspectors to Just get the list together, to send a, a a letter out to everybody who has one, mm -hmm. uh, set up a date and a time for the inspection and give them a copy of the code. Uh, right. and we were going to instead of hitting everybody with them all at once, we were gonna hit them as they had come on. So, and the building inspector was also going to determine the, the next inspection criteria, whether it was one year or three years, because that is in the latitude of the code. So I, I thought that's what we were doing. Think, was there something different? Or? No, I, I think I think one year, considering we have over 40, I think one year is, is difficult um, to do 40. Yeah. So oh, I, I, absolutely. I think- Absolutely, it was up to the building three inspector. Years, and maybe coach. three years is, is good for that, something like that. So. I, I, and I just want to clarify, I just want to make sure for, in the code, um, somebody who bought the house was supposed to go back to the planning board to get approval. So I want to make sure I want to clarify this. So if somebody bought the house, we're going to assume that uh, we're just doing the inspection. They don't have to come back to the planning board and reapply. I want to make sure about that. Yeah, Everyone we, goes for an inspection now. Yeah. Okay. So we're amending the code. Want to amend the code? 
Is that what we're doing? No. So, oh, so the code, we're giving direction to the building inspectors. department to exercise their latitude in enforcing the current code to bring everybody into compliance without being too arduous on uh, the citizens who had attempted to follow the rules to begin with. Yep. What we had done in the past when somebody had come before the planning board who was willing going to purchase a house with an accessory apartment and we had asked those applicants to obtain a letter from the current owner to state that they were allowed to act as their agent mm -hmm. in the application process. As you know, the code states that if you are going to install an accessory apartment in your structure, you have to have that as your primary residence for one year. So it's impossible to somebody to buy a house with an accessory apartment in there mm -hmm. uh, to be under that one year time frame. That's why we had said if it was already in there, it could transfer over as long as it met the same intent, legislative intent. Now I know there's been a lot of discussion on the legislative intent, but I, don't, I think that's outside of the purview of what we're discussing today. Okay, so I for feel, the building feel, inspectors, I'm sorry, Nick. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel a little bit differently. I feel that the uh, when the, when houses are transferred, uh, that the uh, accessory apartment does not carry with it. And um, uh, in this case, because we have not been following up and right. the building inspectors now want to follow up, I think that the letter of amnesty can, can include those people. But I think this letter uh, has to be uh, made, made clear that there are responsibilities uh, of the uh, uh, homeowner as well as um, rights of the village to inspect that um, that if they do not uh, respond, we can give them a whatever, a six month time frame. If you do not respond within six months, you will lose that amnesty. And therefore, you, you know, you'll have to reapply for an accessory apartment. I don't think we should just make it open-ended. Uh, the amnesty is conditional upon upon submitting to the um, um, inspection and following the proper procedures going forward. Yeah, that's an important aspect because we have to get permission to get into everybody's house at the same time too. And uh, right. sometimes that's very difficult as the building inspectors now. <laughs> Once they've been notified, if they, if they do not uh, you know, uh, allow for the inspection to take place, then, then there has to be a time, time frame after which their apartment is no longer legal. Well, Nick, you bring up an interesting aspect though, because if you're gonna make everybody reapply when they transfer the property, then before the house is sold, the tenants have to be evicted. So more or less, nobody's gonna be able to sell a house with an accessory apartment in it because it'll take almost two to three years to evict the tenant for no cause. So you're never going to be able to transfer a property under those terms and conditions. Well, you can, if the person's lease is up, then their lease is up. You know, right now it's very difficult to get rid of, to yeah. get them out because it, it, of all the it, New York state laws. So. Well, Sean's point is taken though. In mm -hmm. most cases, you know, you could, I mean, most, quite often you can give your tenant notice, uh, you know, and, and that can all go through very smoothly, but there will be a time where you have to shell, sell on short notice and there's not a fair amount of time to give to the tenant or there might be a tenant that refuses to leave. You know, there will be difficult situations. So Sean's point is a good point. Um, so maybe then I, I, I'd like to review that code. Maybe what we need to say is upon it, you know, that that uh, when you uh, buy a house, um, you have to within the first year, you have to reapply. So you don't have to well, vacate you know, I, the apartment when you transfer it. Re remember, when somebody sells a house, we the building inspectors do go in to to do an inspection of the house. And I think I think Peter and Brian would like to say something too. Yes, uh, one of the things that a six month time frame for everyone to sign up, or a year if they just purchased it, is I would consider quite long. If you give someone a year to come back in uh, after they bought it, uh, they won't come back in. Uh, they just sort of disappear and they forget about it. Uh, the other thing that seems to be uh, overlooked is that in the law, it says the, huh? the owner has to live in it for one year before they can start this. How does a corporation that purchases a building live in a house? I, I can't see how that can function. So the way the law is written, that someone yep. has to be in there for a year and it's a corporation, 
they don't have relatives. So how can it be a relative of- Well, a corporation uh, implies somebody's buying it as an investment and they're renting both units, in which case the accessory apartment is li- illegal, period. Okay. That's no, absolutely. Good. Listen, mm-hmm. if you find it owner occupied, if, yeah. if, mm-hmm. if you find a structure that is not owner occupied and not living by the spirit of the law, obviously that has to go away. But, you know, if, if, if as the code says, it has to be the primary <laughs> residence and you have to be your primary residence for a year when you put in an application for a new accessory apartment. Okay. That's for an initial assessment, not for a continuation of the accessory apartment. Mm-hmm. That's the mm-hmm. way I remember the way the law was written. I haven't read it in a while. But. Yeah, mm-hmm. The letters that we're going to send out are going to go to the people that have previously had legal accessory apartments. Sure. Absolutely. If we get right. transfer of title between things where it used to be one person, now it's another or if it's a brand new one, that's a different story, I think. Well, as a, there again, the way we interpreted it was, if it's their primary residence and it's still being used the same way, it's still, uh, I think, was it uh, less than 750 square feet, greater than 350 right. square feet? You know, as long uh-huh. as it's not Mac, the same I, term. Yeah. The, 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 big, yeah. the big thing is owner-occupied, so that, that it's not an absentee landlord situation. That, that's Correct. where I draw the line, you know. That's, you that can't have is an advocate landlord. Thing. You can't have multiple complaints. If, if it's still owner-occupied, it's still helping out the property owner to uh, stay viable within the community. That's that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for corporations to buy up single-family houses and rent them out to two families. You and know? That no, that's happen, kind of, we do no, have a case it, it, like that. We do so in this process, we should be determining and right. verifying that the owner lives there. Correct. So, so I think Brian, Peter, I think what we'll do with that one, um, some of those names have long gone. So we just have to look at the property cards right now and the assessment records. We'll notify the current property owner and we just have to tell them they have to get inspected and we'll see who owns it and who's living in there. Okay. I have received a telephone call from a realtor that said they, he was told that it was a house that had one family house that had accessory apartment. When he went to the town of Portland, and looked it up, it was listed as a 220 or a two family house. I told him that the accessory apartments are no longer valid. They would have to be reestablished. He said he's going to sell it as a two family because Cortland says it's being taxed as a two family. And so we've got some complications between the town of Cortland and what you're calling it. Uh, we may have to talk to Mr. Waitkins to see if we can clarify that because if he calls them 220s, they're two family, whether we want to say it's an accessory apartment or not. Well, well, we, um, you know, we have houses like, you know, houses that are legal to families Correct. and they're taxed a little differently than a one family. Uh, it's, you know, there's a little, little slight, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what, how these are, how it's calculated, but I believe that two families or legal threes or fours, there's not a whole lot of that size, but um, are taxed differently. Correct. Do you, Marcus? Do you know how the yeah. village, the, the, how the yeah. village taxes uh, for multiple unit? Housing? Yeah, when it when it gets to two, three families, they're based on income levels of rental income coming in. So that's something we got to talk to. We have, we're, we're straightening okay. it out. There's well, an internal issue. We can straighten that out with Tom tomorrow. So does that mean that these houses with accessory apartments are taxed as one families? Supposed to be. They're supposed to. They're supposed to be, but there is that issue about the accessory unit. So let me okay, talk to see, Tom. I disagree with that because yeah. a, a, a one-family house with an accessory apartment is 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 using the same amount of uh, of uh, of uh, utilities and village services as a two-family. Correct. Correct. So I I'll talk to. I'll figure that out with and Tom. And so those people assessment. should be getting. Tax with that little bump. There yes. should be a bump up in, in tax on an accessory apartment, as far as I'm concerned. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll figure that out with Tom. I think we're outside of the purview yes. of this. We, so let, we are. Let's we bring are it back sure, around and just give are, the building inspectors that direction, and we'll worry about no, the law. We are. We are outside of it, but I think they're important points to bring up, and we can revisit them. We, we have we'll deal with every, it. We don't have to solve every aspect of this, but but there is a little bit of a can of worms thing here. We've opened the can, and we found a few worms. Yeah, so uh, we'll get you an update for the next workshop before they, if I get, ever get some information, I'll email the board. I work with Tom and Brian yeah. and Peter and get back to you. The other thing that came up with the accessory units, again, just bring it up, talking to Brian and Peter, is 
there is no current fee for the inspections. So Brian and Peter, what we're talking about, if the board would feel comfortable with a $50 fee for the inspections, because there is going to take time for these guys to do the paperwork and do all yeah. the inspections on these properties. So $50 is about an hour worth of these guys' time, and it's going to take more than an hour to do these inspections. Well, I think I think that's not a bad idea. You know, we, it's uh, otherwise everybody is paying for the services that those people are utilizing. Correct, correct. So I just want to have the board maybe consider a motion of adding to the fee schedule a $50 fee for the reinspection of these properties. Yeah, that's the Brian Peter, right? We all agree to that number? Yeah, agree to that number. That's fine. There's, yes. Is there no fee now? There's no fee. No fee. No fee at all for the time it takes. All right. So I but I think let's let's go back to this. Yep. this is, these are all illegal now. We want to make sure they're legal and we want them inspected for for safety reasons. Correct. So yes. that's that's the bottom line to this motion for the amnesty. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, should, I should clarify the record. I think the board should adopt a motion to create amnesty under the conditions that were just listed mm -hmm. and then consider a fee at the same a fee right after that as well. So that way everybody's, everything's on the record. Right. How do we need a motion? We just directed a member of the administration motion. on how to... Well, we're providing a motion for the amnesty. Yeah, the reason why, Sean, is because right now they're all illegal. Uh, and then Brian and Peter, they're inspecting an illegal apartment at this point because... The law says they're 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 void. Okay, so we're telling the guy to go inspect it. Why well, we need a whole resolution? Because now you're going to have to put in all these different terms and conditions. It's going to get so cloudy. Why can't you just tell a building inspector, hey, send out a letter with a code, say I want to come and inspect your property? No, I was saying it's a motion just to uh, create an amnesty program for all by existing accessory units. That's it. I believe directing the workforce would would suffice in this situation. All right. I'm going to make a motion to provide amnesty on, to all prior approved accessory apartments on a motion. I'll move. Second. Uh, conditional upon their complying with the, the uh, letter. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I, did you, did yeah. you get a second? You had a second in there. Yep. You have I, a <laughs> I, I, I. Oh I. my God. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Passed. Uh, Teresa, now a, a $50 fee schedule for the inspections, if they can consider that. All right. So um, make a motion to add to the fee schedule a fee for the inspection of um, accessory apartments. Of uh, $50. $50. I'm sorry, of $50. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Okay, we got the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? opposed? Okay, Sean is opposed. All right. Um, we did cover the motion for the services for the, the pool. That's been done. Um, the next, uh, we're going to talk about, there was a recommendation from our engineer to extend the sludge hauling contract for one additional year. So George Palmer, our engineer, has recommended to extend that um, for... Uh, for Fred Cook Jr. Incorporated. Um, does anyone have any comments on this before I make the motion? We need to I have don't. a sludge hold. That's important. That's a real important thing over there. No? no questions, comments? Okay. No. Nope. Alrighty then, we can just move on that. So on a motion, um, oh my goodness. Make a motion to extend the sludge removal contract. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? For, I'm sorry. Sorry, that's for one year, right? That is for one year. That was an option in the in the uh, contract to extend for one year further. So that's yeah. what we're doing. Thank you, okay. Steph. Yeah. Okay, now uh, we uh, yeah yeah this this I'm really not happy about this this upsets me so. We've kind of touched on this before. We, um, our sheetrock plant over on, on Broadway, which is next to the Entergy Indian Point property, they filed a tax surciari. And they, um, we are going to settle the, uh, the court challenge on this. Um, we had a discussion with um, our attorney who handled this. We had a discussion with um, also Tom Wakens, who is the assessor in the town. 
Um, they felt very strongly that we should accept this. Um, just so everyone knows, the assessment reduction is substantial. The village will be refunding uh, the taxes in the amount of $84,625.77. So this is a piece of property that has 44 acres to it, and there's a business currently on it that's been on it for many years, and they um, that's the settlement with that. And I just would urge, I really would urge future board members who are going to develop this property that they look for the best and highest use of any development that goes on from here. Because uh, I believe now, Marcus, correct me if I'm wrong, they'll be uh, paying the village $100,000 a year approximately. Yeah, just a little bit over 100,000, that's correct. Yeah, so for 44 acres, that's that's upsetting on the riverfront. And uh, yeah, I'm just not happy about this, as you can tell. But um, do any of the other board members have uh, any comments on this settlement? Well, I have a, uh, when we were discussing this uh, a couple, over the last couple of weeks, I had asked what the other pilot agreements were with the other taxing jurisdictions, because that's... I believe there was uh, pilots with the, the town and the county. And uh, did, did you ever get anything, Marcus, or did anybody ever receive anything? No, I checked with Tom, and Tom said they're on the assessment row. They don't have they don't have a pilot on the assessment row. And this this reduction, um, the, the assessment is almost the same with the town and the, for the town taxes and school tax. So the assessments are the same now between all the, the three jurisdictions. Because I, I was I was told that there's a pilot with the town. I'll have to check out that again. Yeah, I, 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 Tom told me it was an assessment row. Okay. And Peter and Brian, I know you've been looking at the property to see if there were any um, additional uh, buildings that were not picked up within um, within the last X amount of years. Have you found anything yet? Uh, we found two open permits uh, that have yet to be closed, and we're working on those. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, there is talk of an additional building yet to be constructed. Okay. That construction was held up for finances and it was abandoned when the property changed hands. Uh, that, as of last, it was for a new use. Battery uh, the battery storage system that was going to be in an independent building that was yet to be built. And it, there was storage. There was there were storage facilities for chemicals because it was going to be a different process that was going to be used. Uh, okay. Well, there is another one out about storage. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that the two open permits or no? No. no. Neither one of them no. involves that building or okay. that. All right. So you'll still continue to look into that to make sure everything is taxed properly over there. Yes. And then also, Marcus, for three years. For three years, there there can be no no challenge. No no challenge. The assessment would be frozen for three years, unless they add another building. Correct. Yeah, then then they can go up exactly, yeah. but they can't challenge uh, this assessment. I, I'm looking at the current resolution. I, I can't find my paper from the last meeting at the moment, but wasn't their tax somewhere around two hundred twenty five thousand? And this is going to bring it down to like one hundred forty or one hundred fifty. They were. Or am I mistaken? They were at, I think, about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, roughly. So if you, if we're if we're losing, it's a thirty percent reduction in assessed value. So, and it's bringing it close to a hundred thousand. Marcus, do you have the exact numbers? Uh, no, I did not bring those. Are you looking for this? The, the, the um, tax taxable value or the uh, the, no. or the no, full no, no, value? I have in front. The assessed value was five hundred ten thousand. The new I, assessed value is three hundred fifty two thousand. Correct. Which means. The reduction in assessed value is 158,000, and there's, they should still be paying around 150,000, I think. Yes. So on a percentage basis, mm -hmm. it was a this is a 30 percent reduction in assessed value, so it should be a 30 percent. If 84 represents 30 percent of the taxes, then they should they're still paying more than 100,000 dollars. Yeah, just been a little bit over 100,000. Well, that doesn't make sense based on the assessed value reduction. I, I, so. I can figure I can figure it out for you. Give me a minute. Yeah, I I, I seem to remember it was still one hundred fifty something thousand. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The, the reduction is clear on the resolution. I just um, yeah. I just don't think that the um, thirty percent reduction in assessed value means that they're paying only a hundred now. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, whatever it was, I'll find it later. We could we don't have to deal with that now. Okay, good. All right, any other questions on this? Okay, so I'm going to read the resolution. Whereas petitions having been filed by the property owner below challenging real property tax assessment on the village's assessment role with respect to the following parcels, uh, property owner St. Gobain and it's uh, Continental Buchanan LLC on uh, Broadway. Uh, whereas petitioner's court challenge is now pending in the tax certiorari part of the Supreme Court, Westchester County. And whereas the village and the property owner have reached a mutually agreement resolution with regard to the assessment at the issue in the court challenges. Now, therefore, it be resolved the special counsel to the village is authorized to execute a settlement on behalf of the village for assessments for no less than the following uh, 2021 current uh, is um, Current valuation is $510,250,000. The reduced is $352,000. The reduction is $158,250. And the refund of village taxes amounts of $84,625.77. On a motion. I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Aye. All right. Next is a motion. To, we're going to. Um, set up a public hearing to consider no smoking in village parks. We had the discussion at the workshop just to review the city of Peekskill is um, looking to uh, potentially put one of the, um, what do they call those places? They're cafes too. One of the um, cannabis uh, distribution and also cafes on the village of Buchanan border next to the Lens Cove. So this is how this all came about. And um, we had looked at a legislation from the uh, village from Austin, and they seem to have a pretty comprehensive uh, coverage because we can't just eliminate uh, people smoking pot. So it has to be all encompassing of saying no smoking at all. So we're going to set up the public hearing tonight and we will have a discussion next month on that and um, vote on that. Um, do any of the board members have anything to say on this before I set the public hearing? Yeah, I, I think it's horrible that children should be exposed to people smoking cigarettes. There's enough of a reason right there. More people are getting hurt by the cigarettes in this country than marijuana, but we can't ban one. We have to ban both. Okay. All right, and we'll have further discussion at, at the public hearing. So on a motion to call for a public hearing to consider no smoking in village parks. So a motion for a public hearing on July 6th to consider a motion on banning smoking in village parks. Okay, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So at the next meeting, the next village board meeting, we will, um, we're setting that public hearing. You need a second and a vote. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So the next is we had some questions and Marcus, if you want to jump in on this, we, Marcus found that um, what we thought we completely owned over at Lens Cove, we potentially might not own. So what we're looking to do is to uh, have a survey done of the property and the title search to make sure that whoever's claiming, if Peak Skills claiming it's theirs, that in fact it is. So the price um, for the survey and the title search comes to $7,000. And I, I just think it's important before we move forward over there, if we do any development or not development, any putting any park <coughs> improvements and things, then I think we need to know what we own. Um, Marcus, did you want to add any more on to that? Sure. I just want to make sure it's not, it's not that we don't own it. We do own it. We it's just, own a, it's just the municipal boundaries seem to be within the city of Peekskill. So this, uh, survey and a title search will identify that area, see how long that that's been going on. And then we need, we know what the meets that the, because don't forget is what you see on Google earth. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's to, to correct boundaries. So, but the survey and the title search will know exactly what the boundaries are. And then you as a board can consider what our next steps are uh, to talk to the city of Peekskill, leave the way things are, but at least we know what the actual, actual boundaries are and that you might, you might go to the city. Speak because I know we've been paying taxes on the property. Correct. How much was the last tax bill? 
it was a hundred bucks. It was ninety something hundred bucks, something like that. So we pay county sewer and county refuse tax. So that we don't pay any city tax, we don't pay any school taxes, just the refuse tax and the sewer tax. Huh. Interesting. Okay. All right. So the idea was just to do a survey, title search, get that information back to the board. Then we know exactly where everything is. And then we can discuss what the board would like to do next. Okay. So any other comments? Yes. Marcus, did you shop this this title search and survey? Is this the best number we got? Uh, I got this from a, he's a, he's a, the reason why I reached out to him, municipality is using him because he's a, he's a licensed surveyor, number one. He's also teaches surveying. He's an engineer and he's also a lawyer. So a lot of municipalities use them in case there's any court cases or arguments regarding his research. And I wanted to get somebody that, that cannot be challenged. And he seemed to be the most highly recommended for older municipalities. So you didn't get any numbers, any other numbers from anybody else? No, I just got it from him because he, I, I talked around the other municipalities and said, if you want to hold up in court in case there's a challenge, He's the no, one you want. That's reasonable. Okay. Just make what you say. Absolutely. So he's going to, this fee is also going to include representation for future court challenges because you say if somebody can't be challenged, anybody can be challenged. <laughs> you know? Correct. No, no, absolutely. He'll, he'll, defend, he'll defend any challenges to his survey. For how many hours? Uh, I, he's the, I've seen him go to, okay. yeah, I've seen him go to, um, multiple hours and sit down with other people, surveyors and run that process and never charge because he yeah, wants to I hold would, up. I would just hate for this process to go on for a year or two years. The next thing you know, we're getting bills or something like that. You know? Not I $70, think $70,000 for a survey for that little part. That's pretty high. And that's sur surveying. But, time. If we're getting the ancillary service, mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. Yes, absolutely. Um, also, I wanted to mention just a question that uh, by accepting this proposal, you agree that you will respect my copyright, copyrights to my reports or drawings, if any, and will not copy, reproduce, or adapt my reports or drawings without my written consent. But so once we get that report, like, it's, it's ours, but he just doesn't yeah. want us to make any changes to his report. Oh, well, that makes sense, but it says right. will not copy. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, maybe some of the board members will want copies of that survey once it's done. No, so I just want to make that clear. Absolutely. No okay. problem. All right. So let's go here. Uh, so on a motion to return, retain the services of Matthew A. Noviello, P-E-L-S, to perform a survey and title search on property located at Lens Cove for an amount not to exceed $7,000. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, so we're going to set Excuse me, I'm stepping away for one minute. Sure. Thanks, Nick, for letting us know. Excuse me, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, is it yes, possible? I don't think there's anything else that we... Can we be excused at this yeah. point? There's I'm sorry, else? I apologize. I should have excused you before. Oh, thank you so very much. Good night. 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 Thank you. Okay, I do not have the updated thing, but right now we're going to schedule a public hearing to change the code to meet the current semi-annual billing schedule of water bills. So in our code, it's we're supposed to be billing quarterly. And uh, Cindy has told me, I said, you know, how long has this been that we've been billing twice a year? So she said about 25 years. <laughs> so that does not match with our code. So we are going to have um, a public hearing to change the code to meet what we're doing with our billing now. And also, Cindy, I believe, because I do not have this in front of me, I believe we're also going to be changing late fees also, the percentage. Yeah. Within the code, yes, correct. Within the code, okay, thank you. It's 5% and an additional 1% for every month thereafter until the bill is paid. Okay. That's how it's gonna read. Okay. All right, anybody have any other comments on this? We're just setting the public hearing now. No, okay. So on a motion to um, schedule a public hearing for July 6th, is that good, Sean? Perfect. Okay, good to change the code to meet the current semi-annual billing schedule of water bills and to also include change of late fees. So move. Second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about the tax bills. Um, this is this motion is going to be to change the penalty schedule for the uh, late tax bills to five percent for the first overdue month and one percent per month thereafter. Um, this effect will not it will not affect this year's 2021 tax bills, but it will affect 2022. And I believe, Marcus, that this is New York State law. Yes, New York State law gives you a maximum a maximum five percent and one percent thereafter. So okay. we we're just meeting the state maximum. Okay. So what's our what's our current code say? Uh, Cindy, if I'm correct, is two percent and then one percent thereafter. Yes, correct. So are we changing from two to five for the first month? Is there a maximum per year that the state says we can charge? The maximum is the five percent and one percent, one percent for every month, for one in the one in the year. So sixteen percent. That's correct. If you go, if it's at January, yes, but we you know our fiscal year. <laughs> and we're we're currently charging fourteen percent or thirteen percent, right? Or twelve percent. That's what it is. Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Mm -hmm. We're changing yeah. from twelve percent to sixteen percent. Correct. Let's everybody think about that. It's really the only change is the first month, 3% more. Um, that, that, that increase, it compounds. So correct. Will this, do you think this will increase people's uh, conforming and paying, or do you think it'll just still be the same problem? Yeah, I guess the intent of this is to, is to um, try to get people to comply. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I don't care. We get one penny in penalties. I just want people to pay their taxes and the water bills on time. Um, so that's the that's the so push. Hopefully, it's a deterrent uh, to paying paying late. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have a couple. Of, Cindy knows a couple of heavy hitters like I called that don't pay at all. So it doesn't yeah. matter what you charge. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Well, it's um, it doesn't it doesn't seem un unreasonably uh, excessive or anything. So I support it. So then the only other thing is, you know, I, I understand that we want to make sure that people pay their taxes on time and in, entice them to do so. But, you know, if somebody can't pay their taxes, then it doesn't matter if it's 5% or 2%, you know, if they're just, you know, in a tough spot and they can't pay, then, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's five or two. So I just correct to, to say that. That's correct. Okay, so anybody else, any other questions? Okay, so on a motion to change the penalty schedule on tax bills to 5% for the first overdue month and 1% per month thereafter. Um, and this, this schedule will take effect on the June 2022 tax bills. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. So the next is um, we have finally gotten some bills for our intervener status um, with, um, with the sale between Entergy and Holtec. And we had uh, gone in with the town of Cortland to um, become an intervener. And, and school district. And the school district. Yes, the three of us. And so what we have here is the bills that need to be paid now. And uh, I just I just want to remind everyone why we became an intervener. We became an intervener because um, with the uh, set, with the closure of Indian Point, we were, did not have a seat at the table. So the previous board felt it was really important that we had a seat at the table. So we went in with the town and the school and um, and one of the one of the things too, I, I think back because I remember, I believe it was Pilgrim, and the only settlement that they got at the sale were trees. And I said, mm, I think we need a lot more than trees. So we we decided to go along with this intervener status. And we, we I think you know it was well worthwhile. I I think you know this is the one point two million dollars we got. Um, there's going to be discussions on expedited release of the property and also if there's any damages to the road. So I, I think we did good with that. 
Um, so the bill, um, Marcus had gotten another bill this evening, um, this afternoon. There might be a small portion left. I'm not sure yet, um, but um, the total amount um, that we have to approve today to pay our bill is $15,316.46. Oh, and then the new total, the total total, because it was the $77,000 plus the $15,316, which came in today. So the total we have to approve this evening is $23,762.30. So before I make a motion, would anybody like to make any comments or discuss this? I have a question. I just um, am seeing that the letter from the town attorney is asking us to submit a check for 27,000, but the um, my notes for the meeting say that uh, we're doing a budget transfer of 7,445. What's the difference there? Why, what is? Because okay. we have another billing today. Yeah, so the 27,000 you're talking about was the prior, that was the first bill we got. Then we got the new bill that our portion was 7,000. And then tonight we got a new bill for the 15,000. So the one you're referring to, Nick, is the first bill. That which was we paid, that, which, we, which we paid already. That was yeah. That was approved back in August. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's okay. It was and, the cover and, letter I was looking at here. Correct. Correct. That was the original. So we paid and, that twenty-seven. And, yes. Plus plus another fifteen. And then yes, the, the, in order was the twenty-seven originally. Now this it was a seven thousand four four six point eighty-three. That's what we have as of before tonight's meeting. And then this afternoon, we got another all portion of 15,316.47. So, so Teresa, to, to correct, the, it's under 23, it's really 22,762.30. Oh, That's the okay. real amount. Okay. So Thank then you. so then we actually paid about 49,000 for these services. Yeah. When you combine everything and together, yes. Seems like a lot of money, but I guess the uh, we made it up in the pilot that we got uh, in the tax agreement that we made with them and um, that we more than made that up. And, and Nick, the, and that's our portion. The agreement was all three municipalities pay a third to so the school and this town pay a third, a third of that as well. A third of the of the forty nine thousand. No, every but the portion you're reading they right pay now. The same amount. That's correct. That's correct. It, yeah. Okay. Okay. And the one point two million. Remember, there was nothing that was agreed on. So next year, it would have there would have been some tough negotiations going on with Holtec. But the 1.2 million will will give us some financial um, certainty next for the next year's budget, and will really really help out next year's budget. I've asked Marcus um, after we get some things settled to uh, please look at the projections after, and um, so that that helped us. The 1.2 million really for next year's budget is going to be a really big help. So. After that, of course, you know, each month we have negotiations with them and um, let's see, let's see what we can work out with them going forward. Okay. Any other, any other comments or questions? So what is the amount we're approving tonight? We're going to approve $22,762.30. Well, Marcus, none of this was budgeted for? No. Why not? Let me see. We I'm trying to think when this started. And we have we had it in contingency. The money's in a contingency. The, so the twenty seven thousand was budget was authorized, I think, in August of two thousand and twenty. So that was the twenty seven, right? Yeah. So but if that was already in contingency. So we didn't we didn't have it specifically that we had put it into a contingency. I thought the resolution said not to exceed twenty-seven thousand, some couple of hundred dollars or something. That so, was for the first. That yeah. was for the first. And then what happened is, so the first, the first round, we we did not, um, we did not, we we did not get. Um, what's the word I want to use, Marcus or Stephanie? Help me here. So the first intervener status, we we did not succeed in that. So the board. Um, wanted to continue. Um, we wanted to appeal. That was the appeal. That was the appeal. So we did appeal it. And it worked out for us because at that time, the attorney general became involved because the state was working on settlements. So with the attorney general and us involved, it was 
it was just easier to oh, a, a settlement I, with them. I, I understand that, but mm -hmm. we authorized the expenditure last August. Was that money expended prior to our budget hearings? Because it, it sounds like that money was expended and then we had a budget hearing knowing that I, I didn't, this is the first I heard that, you, that there was an appeal because I don't remember there being a resolution for an appeal, nor was there any funds allocated in the budget for an appeal. I'm just curious. I, I didn't think we had received any bills and I, I didn't know that we had already expended the 20 They're all behind on their billing. So on hey, July 28th last year, we had a discussion and then the August meeting, we discussed and approved to pay the 27 our share. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that was paid last August. And well, then so, you, so the funds were paid in August. The, the funds were paid in August before we had the bills? I, I just so thought I the bills. No, we had the, I believe we had the bills at that point. We did? But the, these other bills have been behind. These other bills. So what we're approving tonight. Okay, so, 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 so let me, let me straighten, let me straighten out. Um, Thank you. They gave us, uh, the town gave us a letter of $27,000. The village board the last year approved the $27,000. I, at that point, I requested the, the detail invoices. Um, and I just recently received those a, like a couple of weeks ago. So that money, your, that money, has not officially been expended, even though it's approved, because I was actually waiting for the detailed bills, which now you have in your hands as well. So that $27,000 is going to be paid out of last year's budget because it was approved last year. And then the $22,000 will be this year. And the reason why I couldn't budget anything with the budget discussion is because I had no idea what the amount would be. Um, because even the town didn't have any ID until we received it, received the 7,000 and the 15,000 after the budget was adopted. All right. So I was, uh, did the original resolution and, uh, retainer include, uh, appeals? I, uh, I don't know if Stephanie won know that. I don't know anything about that. I don't recall and I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. I'm, I'm just curious who authorized an appeal and expenditure of all the funds without a resolution like the original resolution. Because we should have budgeted money for this if we knew it was going to keep going on. You know, this we is didn't what know it was going to keep going on. We didn't know that we would be in an appeal situation. When we filed the original interveners, when we were filed the original, you know, you have to assume that you're going to win. So we decided to do an appeal because the stars had lined up at that point and we were in a good possession to get a good settlement. So the board, the board decided last year to go forward with the appeal. Oh, so there was another resolution for an appeal. I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. There's so, been so much going on. I know it was discussed. Do you know what meeting it was discussed in? So I can, I can watch it to see what, who talked about the appeals. Because if you're going to have an appeal, you're going to need money for it, obviously. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So it, I, I, did, I didn't even know all that money was spent. I didn't know we were going for another 20 something. Is there going to be, is this, does this close out the entire account, Marcus, now? Or do, can we anticipate more bills? If, if we're already eight months behind on the billing, yeah. you know, can we anticipate getting more bills for the next eight months? <laughs> yeah, the, the last bill they came in covers to the end of April, uh, April 30th, according to the town. They, they said it was a little bit of work done in May, but the town said that if the bill is going to be a very minor bill to close out, but, but then that's when we are approved. You know, everything was approved with the new MOU. So they said the bill should be very small. Again, the town doesn't have anything, but the town said the amount talking to the attorney should be a very minor bill. I don't know what that minor bill is going to be. So do you remember when the uh, uh, appeal was, was authorized by the village board? No, I do not. Don't remember. And then if we look at these bills, okay, they really, they really towards the end of March. March, yeah. You in draft reply to whole tech draft MOU. So towards the end of March, we were mostly working on the uh, MOUs. Oh, no, absolutely. I just thought that would be included in the original expenditure and original resolution. If there was another resolution or a decision to move forward with an appeal process, Obviously, you would have to have more funds and to close out and write up all the paperwork for either an appeal or a, 
or a, a final judgment would obviously cost more money. I just thought that we were still operating under the original funds that were originally no. authorized for the. No. For and then the town, the town, you know, the town was was named the lead agency. We had negotiated with the town for many times with Entergy and the town because the town worked closely with this law firm before, and this is a really good law firm. And um, so they were the lead agency and we had agreed to split the school, the town and the village just decided to split <laughs> three ways to cover the legal expenses. Just Sean, just watch every meeting from last year and come back and give us a report next month, okay? I have, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that it might have been done in an executive session because you'd be discussing a lawsuit. And if you came to a resolution, I can't, during I can't an executive remember session, either. You would have to have minutes for that executive session if you were planning on an action which included the expenditure of funds. So that's where I'm, I'm a little confused because I don't remember, and I did watch all the meetings last okay. year, and I don't recall it. Yeah, I. Uh... I don't remember when we discussed the exact details. I remember that we discussed, uh, um, you know, paying a third for these services. I don't remember the exact details of what. That was in was. August of 2020. Right. Yes. Okay. So then what are the questions okay. you want answered, Sean? Oh, that's okay. Keep are you... Are you concerned about this? Are you trying to dig it up because you think it's a problem? I, just think, I, I, I was under the impression that the money that we had left over that there was money left and I didn't know that these new bills were coming in. I mm. had no idea that that, that that was already signed. And I don't remember ever discussing it during a budget hearing. So if we had already filed for an appeal and knew that we only had a couple hundred dollars left, yeah. 27,000, it would be obvious that you would get yeah. money. And we had the budget hearing in April and most everything was almost completed in April. You know, so that's yeah. I'm just curious as to why and, and how it worked out. That's all, I, I really didn't know. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought we had money left. That's all. This yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember the board authorizing it. I don't remember the, the timing of the expenditures the or or what we said about it. And I know talking to, to Tom Wood, too, I had a couple conversations with him. This, when it got to March, this really started moving very fast. This this whole, all the agreements and the conversations going on were very, very fast um, because like I said, the attorney general had become involved settling for the state. And uh, fortunately they they were involved because um, they they were helpful for us um, in getting this settlement too. Okay, so, all right. So um, we're going to do a motion for uh, to tr for a budget transfer of twenty two thousand seven hundred sixty two dollars and thirty cents from contingency to law other expenditures other expenditures a fourteen twenty point four six zero to cover the cost for special counsel regarding Indian Point intervention on a motion so move second second all in favor aye aye opposed opposed okay everybody else is an aye. Okay. All right. Um, oh, was Anthony Anthony's vote? Where's Anthony? Muted. Oh, oh, you mute yourself, oh, Anthony. Yeah. I, I hit the mute again. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. Okay. So um, consider a motion to ratify the fire department elections as per our contractual agreement. Um, they what the firehouse reports to us now. And that is by contractual and village law is when they have an election. So on May 13th, there was an election held. Um, and the following, these are the updated chiefs. Chief Andy Rausch, Robert Outhouse was elected to first assistant chief, uh, to first assi assistant chief. So that was the election Robert Outhouse won. Second assistant chief was Al Park. And also Jack Delaney, ex-chief, is now serving as fire medic trustee with Bob Wheeler. So on a motion to ratify the fire department elections. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so the next one is a motion to extend the agreement with the Buchanan Fire Department for one month. Um, we, let's see, we, so the, the, 
the agreement ended um, on May 31st yesterday. So we need to have a discussion on that. Um, we kind of had it, this was, Stephanie, if you want to speak to this. Sure. It, it was a long process, but we had hammered out, I think, a fair uh, agreement with the fire department. Yep, and I can uh, tell you that what I'm hearing is that there are three minor issues. One of the members, or maybe many of the members, want to discuss and think that it could be resolved rather quickly. I'm not really aware of what they are. Um, so we decided to, to extend it for one month and give us the opportunity to see what the issues might be. I asked if their counsel is involved. Uh, they said no. They were relatively minor. And I'm getting all this from Marcus. You know, my first gut was have their attorney call me if there's a problem. But Marcus seemed to, to be confident that these were minor. So we'll see. We're giving him a month. He also, the other thing is that, um, you know, on behalf of the fire department, this was supposed to be a one-year agreement, but we commenced it on November 27th. And for some reason, it ended May 31st. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's very <laughs> yeah. strange. And I, I'm not sure how that happened because you can see the dates are handwritten in. But I did speak with Marcus today and we think that um, for some reason we put it <laughs> May 31st because that's the end of our fiscal year. Is that correct, Marcus? Okay, well, anyway. Marcus yes, that yes, that's correct. And um, and then in that agreement also has the amount to be supplied to the fire district, fire company. So I think the idea was to tie in the contract with the contribution to the fire department and the fiscal year. Right. That makes so, sense. So on there, be, I mean, I, I mentioned it solely because, you know, they're asking for one month extension, which I don't think is in, unreasonable because they thought probably that it continued through November. It was a one-year agreement. And so they had some others. They would have had more time to negotiate whatever the issues were as we're working through. So I think a month is really reasonable. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fine. And will we have them at the next workshop, or will we have separate meetings with them and and then report at the at the next workshop? Well, now Andy's here. I can ask Andy to speak on that if you if you like. Andy's here. Where's yeah. Andy? Yes. Andy, Andy, <laughs> fire chief. If you, oh, want to, if you want to unmute yourself, you uh, might be. I'm here. So I think the question is the is, the items that you guys would like to discuss or modifications. I assume my understanding is that there may be minor issues. Do you want to, um, when do you think you'll be able to provide those um, concerns to the board for consideration? Would they be ready for the next workshop? Um, I can go back to the trustees and ask them, but unfortunately I can't make that determination. Okay. All right. So we have a month to have some conversations. Do you feel yeah. a month is good, Andy? What's that? Do you feel a month is good? Russell? Yeah, I think a month is fine. Okay. All right. Good. So what's the process? Are we going to discuss it at the next workshop or is it going to be worked out and somebody will report back at the next workshop? I, I think my hope is to get their list and forward over to the village board for discussion at the next workshop. Okay. Well, Nick, there's on. Why don't you go over there and talk to them? Yeah. Nick is very good. Nick has a good relationship with I can do that. He yeah. always does. That, you know, I was, that's why I'm asking what the pro, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if it's something that Stephanie has to discuss with their lawyer. I mean, no, I, I, no, 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 I think their discussion is that, that, that they're not going to have their lawyer involved. Andy is one of your, one of your board meetings the next week. Our uh, the trustees meeting is next Tuesday. Yeah, so hopefully we'll discuss. So and, and Nick, you can discuss it with them next Tuesday, and then we. What can time have is this. your board meeting? Uh, I believe it's six thirty. Uh, I have to get back to you if I can make that. I have some plans for Tuesday. But hopefully okay. they'll give us a list by uh, after their meeting. They'll give us a list, and we the board can discuss it at the next workshop. Okay. Well, I would like to see it too, Marcus. Oh, absolutely. At the board, I also include you, Stephanie, all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's there's just one one thing I want to say, but I was reading some of the emails that were going back between Stephanie and Rich and Marcus and everything. You know, I really think that it should be the village administrator and the village board enforcing the terms and conditions of this contract. Stephanie hammered it all out. Mm -hmm. I don't think she should be the one that has to go line by line whenever something comes up. Okay. to give her input you know the, the contract should be enforced by the board it's very it's very arduous 
I, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of Stephanie. I just would hate to see more and more workload being put on her where now she's the enforcement agent for the contract. <laughs> No, no, let's see what we're coming forward with, and then we can have that discussion. No, I, I realize that when we were looking at the at the emails that were going back and forth, she was talking about the different things that are supposed to be being enforced. Oh, yeah. That should not be her responsibility. Yeah, her absolutely. responsibility was for the negotiations. She gave us a product. Now it's our responsibility to ensure that the terms and conditions of that product are enforced. If we have an interpretive issue or an addition or subtraction, then we can consult her, but I hate to have her sitting there reading the reading the contract, looking for individual words for two or three hours. You know, it's it's very <laughs> arduous, and I don't think you know if she wants to do it. I'm sure I'm sure she, yeah. she'd be more. We'd be more than happy to let her do it, but I don't think it should be placed on her. No, that's yeah. right. You, you know what? We we talked about this last time, mm -hmm. and I said that I would uh, go through all this with the fire department. Uh, I just asked uh, to have a review. Be I was looking over the contract. There are about 10 different items that are yep. supposed to be reported either on a monthly basis or an annual basis. Yep. Um, so maybe Mark, I'll just come in and Marcus, if I have any questions on it, I'll come in and go over with you. I can deal with the fire department on that and outline with them at, uh, I have a meeting with them and outline what, it, you know, make sure everybody understands what has to be reported. Yeah, Mark uh, nope, made nope. a point of contact for yeah. all these reports because there's a lot of reporting, uh, a lot of levels of reporting that are required. The department well, the, should be submitting it to Marcus. You should be you you could be verifying that the terms and conditions have been applied. And if there's a question as to an interpretation of how to apply or how to get it back, then maybe we can go to somebody else. But I think you no and Marcus, problem. Marcus should be the primary person because he's the administrator. Yeah, he's no, the, no, not yep. reporting to me. I'm just yep. I'm no offering problem. I'm offering to review with everybody what the reporting obligations are, make sure everybody understands what they are. I'm not the point of contact for the reports. That's Marcus and the village board as a whole. Gotcha. Yep, no I just, problem. I just don't want to say, I hate throwing everything out of Stephanie because she does such a great job, but it gets overburdened. It gets it's so very touching that somebody's being so nice to you, Stephanie. Yeah, how about that? You must want something. Yeah, and I appreciate it. That's don't, good. Don't yeah. want anything, okay, Mayor. Leave, leave compliments. For, for, we for appreciate employee. you. You know that. Over the years, yep. we've complimented you every step of the way, and we appreciate yep. you. I know that. Just put up with us. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to make a motion to extend the agreement with the Buchanan Fire Company for one month. One more motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Stephanie, I'm going to, you know, we, we've been talking about this game of chance. We've gone round and round. And I, you know what, there's nothing to vote on here, but just for further discussion, if you have anything um, to add to this or review it again. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know what to add that we haven't already discussed. If you, if you, if the village would like to allow games of chance, it's legislation. There are two ways you can do it. You can do your own. We can do our own local law and add it to our code um, and take on all of the responsibilities, including the enforcement and the licensing and or general, general municipal law allows us to sort of piggyback off the town who has um, apparently <laughs> enacted a law uh, allowing games of chance. And so what the municipal law says is if you're a village incorporated within a town and the town allows it, we can then allow it via a local law, which basically um, allows the the um, town to handle games of chance for us, including the enforcement, including the mm. licensing, the background checks. That mm. is by permissive referendum. We wanted to do it on our own and not use the town and just, we can do that too. That's a mandatory referendum. You know, so it, it really depends on whether you want to whether you are interested in games of chance in your village well, and then we can decide which way you want to go what i'd like to do is write 12 different versions of the law some allowing yeah. games of chance and some not i'd like to mount them on a big wheel and yeah. if anybody wants to uh, have games of chance at their at their at their church or whatever they come into the village hall and spin the wheel and whichever one comes up that's what they have to follow for that year can we do that no <laughs> I thought at the last meeting, we said we were going to create a resolution that allowed the games of chance and we were going to refer everybody to the town of Cortland law. 
Nice. And we were going to have the town of Cortland be the enforcement agent in the village of Buchanan. And that was all based on, on the law. Yes, and, and that was discussed, but I didn't know how the board wanted to move forward in terms of your timing and a permissive referendum or... We were going, we were going to have a permissive referendum, and that's why uh, they, you guys had sent out what the terms and conditions of the permissive referendum were, the number of signatures, uh, all of that stuff. Okay, so first let's start with, does everyone want to allow the games of chance within the village of Buchanan? Let's start there first. Is everybody agreeable to do that? No. And do you know what they entail? I mean, no. Right. Well, we're voting yeah. on a resolution or? No, no, I just want to get a feel from the board. So there's no sense in us continuing if no one wants to do it. So I think we should do it. I'm, I'm, hearing, wrong with I'm it. hearing that the the majority of the board is interested in doing games of chance. Okay. What do, what do you think, Teresa? Well, you know what, as long as it doesn't get crazy, you know, the church is looking to do, but this just doesn't include the church. This is throughout the whole village. So I know the church had mentioned that they wanted to do a car raffle, which is about $35,000. I know they're interested in doing bingo, but you know, just remember this opens it up for everyone. And we do not have the staff for us to manage this ourselves, because otherwise it would become really a burden for the police chief if we if we just did legislation. So I, I think if we are going to do it, I think it's best that we piggyback on the town with them and let them. It's only for nonprofits though, correct? That's yeah. It, so, yeah. It is uh, the way the law reads, it's bona fide religious or charitable organization, bona fide educational fraternal or service organizations, uh, veterans or volunteer firefighters, which by its charter, on and on. So yeah, it's not you know your neighbor who wants to. Is know, there any nonprofit that something. would be any nonprofit that would be excluded? I mean, a food bank could do it. A, um, I mean, um, is there any nonprofit that could not do it? Um, you know, I'd have to read you the whole law. So I'll read it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out uh, make sure that it only applies to. Nonprofit organizations, uh, uh, companies, private companies cannot do it. You know, a deli can't say we're going to have a fund rate. Uh, we're going to do a games of chance. It's only nonprofits. Yeah, because That's when they apply, sense. when they when they go for the application, it's they're going to have to. It's a nonprofit application. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. The only other issue. <laughs> Is that although the town has been running games of chance apparently for ever, um, they don't seem to have passed a local law. It's not in their code. I think Marcus, you had a conversation. Are they planning on codifying this somehow? Yeah, the, my discussion know? with the town clerk was they check with the state, and the state has confirmed that they are authorized to issue licenses or permits or games of chance. And based on that, they're not going to change their code. They said they have the authority to do so. Well, can we get that in writing? Because we're going to piggyback off their authority. <laughs> sure. I'll ask the clerk to uh, send me an email confirming that. And I'll, I'll share it with the whole board and with you, Steph. No problem. Okay. I, I've, I currently think it will be okay. I'm not 100% decided yet. I'd like to you know, hear more uh, opinions and, and more information. Uh, right now, we're not doing anything. Or what, what it says the the... The meeting agenda tonight says consider the process. What does that mean? We're consider the process to allow games of chance. What does that mean? We're just we're just having a, a further discussion on it. Okay. Yeah. Well. All right. Because Stephanie, I'm leaning said, towards it. Not 100 percent decided. Okay. Okay. So that would mean Stephanie. Um, really, the best way to go would be with the permissive referendum. Well, is if. Is it um, something that if we approve, it is subject to permissive referendum? We don't hold a permissive referendum. That's up to the voters if they want to uh, sign, you know, get uh, organized and sign, get signatures. Correct. To, um, okay. But then, because of the timing, if you got the amount of signatures from people saying, hey, we want this put to a vote, you'd be doing a special election. Just so you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So there's a potential for special election. Correct. And if you don't get it's 30 days. So actually it becomes law subject to 30 days later goes into effect. If you don't have a petition signed by enough voters, then it just moves forward. If you do, you put it to a special election. The voters. Mm. Vote. 
I have a hard time that there'd be enough voters that would organize to do that, being that our average attendance at these meetings is three people. Right. I just need to tell you that if they do vote, you're going to put it to a special election. Other than that, it becomes law and you'll piggyback off the town. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we just move our uh, elections to November. Would that would that uh, enable it, and and um, and not have to pay to open the polls an extra time? And would that would that then be able to if it if it did take place, could it would that be good timing for it, or is that not the issue? Uh, if you moved it to November, you'd have a petition filed after. November 1st or before September 1st, that's a special election. I don't I think still it helps. Have to have a special I don't think it helps. The timing yeah. is off. You're going to have a special yeah, okay. election. <laughs> so that doesn't matter. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So am I being asked to do a resolution for the next, um, not workshop, but the next meeting subject to permission of referendum? Is that what you want me to do? I Give believe that's the direction. Order. That's why I wanted to ask that question. I just, you know, we just needed uh, further direction from the board. Mm. The answer is yes, Stephanie. Okay. okay, thank you. There you go. In the works. Okay. So, um, information from officers and departments, Justice Court Report, April 2021. Uh, collection on one thing was $218, the other $543. Reports are received and filed. Police report, April 2021. Um, hmm. Okay, that's been received and filed. Highway report, April 2021, received and filed. Got a lot of grass cutting going on these days. Uh, wastewater treatment plant, April 2021, received and filed. Almost, almost, almost 10 million gallons of water treated over there. Building department, April 2021. Um, you can see the building permits that were issued and the COs that were issued, received and filed. Um, we have the planning board minutes for April 15th, 2021. Those are received and filed and zoning board minutes for April 14th, 2021. Attorney's report, Stephanie, do you have anything for us this evening? I don't, but let me make a correction. What I just said about the game, about the games of chance, that's actually going to be a local law. Okay. You know, amending the code. It's not just a resolution. So okay. I'll get that written as quickly as I can. So then we would we would put it up for next month for a, a set the public hearing. Correct. Okay. And then we would be able to vote on it in August. That's correct. Okay. And no, I don't have anything else for you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks, Steph. Um, administrators report. Marcus, what do you have for us this evening? Uh, just a quick thing. Um, the, the fire department did provide a report and uh, email to the village board. So I, 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 if you can recognize that as well, they're actually uh, pro providing monthly reports. So I told them to try to tie it in with the board meetings from now on. So hopefully you'll get it a little earlier. Okay. Uh, also part of the wastewater treatment plant, um, we had three inspections, um, one after the other, and so a surprise inspection from the DEC. I'm happy to report all re all inspections we passed with flying colors. Um, so I just want to let you know that was very good news. The surprise, uh, in fact, the surprise inspection for DEC when Todd was on vacation and he actually came back to make sure he was there with the inspector. So everything worked out very, very nicely. Um, besides that, I have nothing else to report tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Um, mayor's report yesterday, Memorial Day. Uh, it was it was really a, a very touching tribute um, with nice turnout. Um, I was happy to see the whole board attended. Um, I want to thank uh, the Buchanan Fire Department for uh, Buchanan Engine Company for being this year's sponsor. Every every year, one of the three Tri Village uh, Fire Departments sponsor it, so it was Buchanan's turn this year. And um, I want to also thank Troop 36, the Boy Scouts from Montrose. They did a great job. We had, um, we had some veterans there. Um, it just, it was really a very nice service. And um, it ended the sunset, stayed out for us. The sun didn't, it didn't rain. So it was, the sun was trying to peek through, but it, it didn't. But it was, it was a good day. It was a very touching tribute to our fallen 
Um, we also had in the village uh, Rolling Thunder. I, I don't know how many people got to th see that, but we do have a resident who um, actually wrote in that and he taped it, uh, videoed it. So we'll, we'll put that on our Facebook page. And um, so they came through about one o'clock. They uh, started from Welcher Avenue and they went to the VA. And I understand the uh, veterans were very happy uh, seeing them. Some updates, um, we're continuing to work on the design for the Village Circle. Um, we had gotten some grant money from Entergy and what we're gonna do over by the park there, we're going to put a wall and uh, a new tree. Um, the tree that was there is dying, um, the uh, Christmas tree. So uh, this should be all done before the holidays and we'll have our new Christmas tree in. Um, some of the things we're going to discuss are uh, some events to have in the village, uh, maybe at the next workshop. Uh, I was thinking something like ice cream days or something like that. Uh, we will not be having our annual um, Buchanan Day ceremony, uh, Buchanan Day event this year. Um, I just, you know, it's kind of, it takes, it takes time to, it's a big thing to organize and we were just concerned. We didn't know how things were going to turn out, but, you know, with the COVID, we don't know if there's going to be a resurgence. So we didn't want to tie ourselves into the Buchanan event. So, but we can do other little events along the way throughout the summer. So that's one of the things we'll be discussing at the next workshop amongst other things. So um, right now, that's all I have. Uh, Trustee Murray, uh, we'll thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, There's just a, a few things. I, uh, Marcus, on the village website, on a planning board website, we still have the incorrect uh, application on there. Uh, it's still the old application where it states that commercial okay. applicants will have to pay uh, for consultants fees. I know we had discussed this once before. Uh, I'll fix that. No yeah, because everybody's supposed to be paying the consultants fees. There was a yeah. decision yep. made a while ago, and I thought we had we had switched that. But I went and looked at it again today, and it is still the old application. So it should reflect that, that everybody has their consultants fees. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, we've been talking about the Lens Cove property and what we would like to see on those the, the, the northernmost parcel. I don't know. Uh, I know Nick had said he wanted to use his draft as a as a, a template, but I thought that might be a little too arduous. So my suggestion to Marcus and to the rest of the board would be uh, to send out an RFP. And my suggestion is 30% residential, 50% commercial, and 20% public access. We'll let the potential developers come to us with different plans so that we don't get bogged down in the process. And I, I believe it would be better for uh, the village not to expend any more funds and try and do it ourselves. I think if we set broad parameters, we can get a lot of different input from professionals. So that's that's the way my suggestion would be to come up with, with ideas for Lens Cove. Uh, like I said, 30% residential, 50% commercial, and 20% public access. No, Sean, the only thing I, I, I wanted to mention about that, I am not sure how how developers will jump on that because it, we haven't rezoned that area yet so it and we don't own it yet so i just i'm not sure if we're going to get many people that will jump in to to do you know to respond to the rfp i understand i'm sure we can set parameters uh, okay. yeah i disagree well look i this is a workshop uh, item this is not yeah, yeah. you uh, could give yes, your I'm report i'm just giving my report nick that's, Sean's just I'm expressing sorry. his opinion he's giving his yeah. report let him express his opinion yeah. so let's put this on the agenda for the next workshop Perfect. i mean i completely disagree with those parameters okay. and i think that we need to uh, uh have a rezoning first uh, I think it's a little, you know, so so let's leave that for the workshop because it's, you know. Well, the reason why I'm bringing this up, I'd like to some of these things to be put on a workshop. Sure. The other thing that I would like to be on the next workshop, I know I've talked about this for several months, is mm -hmm. to either repeal or enforce the water tax. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I had mentioned it I probably on the, the, the 20, April 27th meeting. I believe I mentioned it in the May 5th meeting, and it was we were going to discuss it last week. However, around midnight, we <laughs> think it's probably be too productive. Yeah, I, I would like to at least 
with either repeal or enforce the water tax. You know, we have that law that was that's been on the books for two or three years and it's just sitting there and it's, it's not being used. I, I agree. Let's get that on the next workshop agenda. Perfect. Yep. We will do that. Uh, the other thing is I uh, would like to be able to start meeting in public. You know, the yep. governor many months ago allowed us to meet in public and they made it the law that would be, or the executive order said that it would be up to the municipality to meet in public. There are a lot of governing bodies that do meet in public. And I, I would really like to uh, start meeting in public. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if we're gonna, yeah, that's-, that's hey, Can you mind if I give my report, Nick? Sorry, Sean. Okay, okay. thanks, I appreciate right. it. Thank you, let Sean finish. Okay. Thank also, you. in the uh, April 27th meeting, uh, the mayor appointed me, uh, the negotiator between the PBA and uh, the village. And over the past couple of, over the past month, I had asked for some input from the rest of the elected officials on what changes they would like to have. I have talked to PBA. I have talked to the police chief. I have talked to Marcus and I haven't gotten any input from anybody on the board. So, you know, I the contract expired yesterday and I really like to start the negotiations. I'd like to have everybody's input, but I'm not gonna, I don't think we should have to wait another month. So if you guys could write something down, send me an email, drop it in my box. I would like to put a cutoff or close of business on June 5th, on June 4th, which would be this Friday. And I'd like to start setting up uh, dates and times to negotiate with the PBA. So I'll be in Village Hall at 4.30 on Friday to get all your guys' information. Uh, you know, I, I have asked for this several times and it's I haven't gotten any uh, any feedback. I think so. we can get into more detail. I, I apologize for, for interrupting you, but we can go into executive session right after this is over and we can continue the conversation. Sure, that's okay. fine. Yeah. You got it. Uh, another thing, I definitely uh, want to thank uh, everybody who came to the Memorial Day service the other day. You know, uh, my American Legion post was there with the firing squad, the w William J. Boyle post. We had the uh, former uh, vice commander of the National Purple Heart, William Nazario, there. Mm -hmm. And we also had a county commander from the American Legion, Bob Bodie, there. And, uh, you know, it was nice to see some young people there. I would have liked to see more uh, public participation, but I realized that the times are a little bit different now. But I do appreciate the large turnout we had from our voluntary services as well as our ambulance corps and the support we had from the sheriff and the police department. So I believe that's all I have. So I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Trustee Funchen, what do you have for us this evening? Uh, well, to begin with, I got the, uh, the usual police reports filling in for the big shoes of the chief. Uh, on uh, April 9th, uh, approximately 2.50 in the morning, Officer Red responded to a report of a domestic dispute at a village residence. After an investigation, it was determined that a crime was committed and Officer Reg subsequently made an arrest for assault, criminal destruction of breathing, and criminal mischief. The arrested party was arraigned in village court and given a future court date. Uh, note here that this is what... Uh, police officers really don't like to get into because they get into uh, a, uh, an argument between families and they immediately become the enemy. So I really think he did a great job. Uh, on April 14th, uh, at approximately 1040, Detective Walshner responded to a civil dispute between a tenant and a landlord. A de Detective Walshner was able to advise the involved parties on the matter and provide information for assistance with the issues. Uh, boy, that's some hour of the night to get, for people to be arguing about their apartment. Yeah. Uh, on April 24th at approximately 2.09 p.m., Sergeant Palmietto responded to a complaint of possible criminal mischief to a vehicle in the village. Upon arrival, Sergeant Palmietto spoke to the owner who advised that the damage had to be done in the past few hours. Sergeant Palmietto opened an investigation into the criminal mischief and provided the owner with all needed information. Uh, on April 28th, uh, 20, uh, at approximately seven o'clock in the evening, Officer Tiernan responded to a call of a person in distress in a wooded area in the village. Upon arrival, Officer Tiernan was able to ascertain some information 
on uh, on last on his location and and description. Officers here and then retrieved uh, retrieved his needed equipment and began a search. He officer Tyrion was able to locate the individual in an unresponsive state. Officer Tyrion provided medical aid while at the same time providing other responding medical personnel with his location. Uh, the, the chief, uh, rec, you know, said that to me that he should be commended for his actions, and uh, hopefully this poor individual, whatever that may have happened to him, is uh, had got good medical care. But that was pretty tough for him to go out there and just based upon some small information, really find out in some some wooded area which went unidentified, I guess, at this particular point. Uh, as was mentioned before, I was at both Memorial Day ceremonies. They were very, uh, very nice, uh, especially the one over in the Morabito Center because the, they had a gold star mother. And um, it was really uh, extremely emotional. And I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, you can say everything, but nothing can touch their hearts because it, the pain is so much of having to lose a, a son or a daughter. So uh, she was really, she really gave a nice uh, speech. Uh, Father's Day is coming up. So happy Father's Day to everybody. Uh, also, let's not forget the 14th is Flag Day. Put out your American flags. Hopefully they're made in the United States, not made in China. Um, and uh, just one, always, I just want to emphasize uh, fireworks are illegal and fireworks bother <laughs> uh, people who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disease from the, the wars in Iraq and Af Afghanistan and even going back as far as Vietnam. So I know that they're, they're fun and games for people. I understand that. I just want you to know that they are, they are hurting some of our, some of our veterans who, who served in wars. And that's all I got for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Trustee Capicotti, what do you have for us tonight? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just wanted to say about yesterday, uh, the Memorial Day, uh, it was, it was great. It was great. It was, uh, good to get involved for the first time with, uh, trustees and other, other members of the village. Uh, the, the mayor sang with a, a, a wonderful, wonderful tune. It was, it was something else. And I uh, told you it's your turn next year, Anthony. I want to commend you on even the effort was, was <laughs> it was really something special. Oh, thank you. Uh, as far as moving forward out of the pandemic, I, I, you know, after watching that yesterday, I'd like to see the village, you know, maybe get, get involved with some more events, you know, recreational events or something constructive for the community, uh, for the families in the, in the community, you know, get the children out of their homes, maybe. You know, the pandemic's, we're, we're getting out of it now, so maybe we can think of coming up with some ideas to move out of this. Okay. Um, you know, other things, uh, I, I, you know, it, it, for the community, I, I'm new at this, you know, I just want you guys to shoot me emails, you know, any questions, anything you need from me, I can be your voice here. If I, you know, I, I can, you know, I can do whatever you need me to do. Uh, that's why you voted for me. So I, I should shoot me some emails. Let me, let me, let me hear your input on anything. You know, I'm involved in construction or, or anything like that. If I can answer your questions, I'll be, I'll be happy to do that. Um, another thing is, uh, I have five children and they like to ride their bikes on Tate Avenue. I asked the community and people coming through the community, please take note of the speed limit. Uh, it's there for a reason. And uh, I hate to see an accident, especially in the summertime, after coming out of this pandemic, you know, these kids are happy to finally get out. Please be careful. Um, and that's just about it. I mean, just like I said, shoot me emails, if any, anything I can help you with, I'd be more than happy to assist in anything I can do for, for the community and for this village. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And um, please bring your thoughts about events at our next workshop. We'll discuss that then. And I have spoken to the police chief because I did get a few um, few complaints on Tate Avenue from 4th Street going down to uh, Kings Ferry. So if you know a time, if you're seeing anybody speeding, speeding, just, you know, get to the police, let them know so that they can, you know, set up uh, some yeah. radar there or something. 
No, I spoke to Shane and okay. I spoke to him about it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, he, they're doing a great job. They're on my street okay. and they're really proactive about it. And I appreciate what they're doing. So we'll get it, we'll get it resolved. Okay, good. Thank you. And Trustee Zachary, what do you have for us this evening? Hmm. Trustee Zachary, the grand finale. <laughs> um, Anthony, thanks for mentioning that. I, um, you know, I, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I've proposed periodically over the years that parking on Tate be um, only limited to one side of Tate and the other side um, be, um, you know, put up a few signs that say share the road or put up a, a, a line, a green line, you know, that one side be made a little more pedestrian friendly. I, I, uh, like many of my ideas, I didn't get a whole lot of support on that, but uh, but I do agree with your, I, I'm glad to hear your concern there and that people are getting out and using their bikes. You see people, women with carriages and families walking groups. It's, you know, Tate Avenue is a much more of a, uh, you know, pedestrian bicycle uh, active area in the good weather than it used to be when I first moved here. You could, you know, count about one person per hour at tops, you know, now it's much more activity. Um, anyway, a uh, couple of things. The uh, logo, the, the contest for redesigning the village logo um, is extended to October 15th. Um, you know, it's, uh, we had some entries from some, um, from some of uh, the school uh, classes uh, and uh, we're hoping to get other app, uh, entries uh, posted. Um, and we're, so we're going to give it a little longer. Um, uh, number two, the last workshop, I once again pushed for a kayak dock at Lens Cove and some and board members generally did not seem to agree with that. There was an email from somebody in the, uh, that um, Sharon forwarded to me supporting that and um, anybody else in the village that you know, feels that's something they would like to see at Lens Cove. Marcus, I know you put it in the newsletter. Thank you. Uh, any, but anyone else that feels that a kayak dock at Lens Cove, which is a nice sheltered area, um, um, would would be a good thing to have here in the village and something you would like to see, please reach out to, to me or to the uh, village hall, you know, in some form. Um, and um, at the next workshop, uh, well, Sean did mention a couple of things there. Uh, we definitely need to get into further into that discussion about the, uh, mm -hmm. um, the, the rezoning and the land use in that Indian Point parcel at the north end. Um, and um, uh, so people that have ideas of how they'd like to see that property used, uh, please uh, come, you know, zoom into that next workshop. Um, the idea of meeting in person, just to follow up on what Sean said, I think is interesting. I'd be um, uh, wondering how we would work that out as far as um, if you're, you know, do we, because not everybody's been vaccinated. So how do you, you know, would the public not want to come out? Um, you know, I mean, what we're seeing now online with Zoom, five people, five attendees, other than the board and uh, staff here, uh, is, you know, the average that we had in our live meetings, one would, if, unless we were doing something controversial, the average was two, three, four people. So, uh, I don't know that zoom is necessarily keeping people away. Um, but, um, anyway, uh, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'd like to know how we would handle it as far as those people who are not vaccinated yet, uh, and the requirements and the safety. Um, but I suppose at some point, uh, we're going to actually have to see each other live and in person. Um, and um, uh, that's that's really all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Um, I, you know what, I, I'm sorry that I didn't bring it up. But yes, Sean, it's, you know, it's time to get back to live meetings. And um, the only concern is I don't know what the CDC requirements are for people who haven't been vaccinated. I believe that they have to wear a mask, but we will look into that. Um, so, but yes, I would like to get back to normal and back yeah. to the meeting. So let's, uh, let's work. Yeah. Well, and I will add to my report. If you're not yet vaccinated, anybody get out there and get vaccinated. If you don't have a health reason preventing you from do it, 
from doing it, do it because you're just making things easier for everybody in terms of getting back to normal. The more people that get vaccinated, the better we all get back to normal. So be a little, do, do a good thing for the uh, social uh, group at large, the community, and get yourself vaccinated. There you go. There's your 30 seconds. It only hurts for a thank second. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Nick. Uh, let's go to comments from the floor. Any comments from the floor? And Cindy, let us know if anybody's called in or will call in, please. No phone calls. Okay. No, ha no hands raised. Hands. Okay. So I would um, like to make an, a motion to go into executive session to discuss contractual issues. A move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.